two, three, four. Hey everybody, welcome to Niagara Wine Videos. I'm Brad and I bring you the story behind Niagara's finest wines. And I got a couple of wines for you here today. I've got a really, really nice uh, structured um, artisanal uh, style winemaking uh, wine here from Organized Crime. And I have your LCBO pick of the week. Uh, now I thought this LCBO pick of the week, well both these wines actually would be a good follow up to last week's show when I picked some you know, fuller bodied, riper styled wines, nice uh, structure to them uh, to, to show people that Niagara does produce these wines and yes, they're good alternatives towards uh, California counterparts, right? So uh, the first one here I'll get into is the Organized Crime. It's a 2010 pipe down is what they've call it, called it and it's a Bordeaux blend, a left bank Bordeaux blend consisting of 43% Cabernet Sauvignon, 43% Cabernet Franc, 9% Petit Verdot. Petit Verdot always brings nice structure and grip to the wine and some really nice I find black coffee grind flavors. So cool that Petit Verdot is in there. Uh, Merlot softens the wine, makes it a little bit rounder. Uh, it was aged for 11 months in French oak. Um, so I presume that's high quality French oak. Like I said, very artisanal, everything's hand done. They like to be involved with the winemaker. I must point out that the winemaker is Andre Lipinski, uh, kind of a celebrity winemaker, right? Makes wine for his own label and then like another five wineries. So uh, he is a very talented winemaker and he's kind of uh, implemented this um, repasso or a passamento style uh, winemaking where you dry a portion of the grapes uh, like they do in, um, in Amarone wines. He's implemented this process in Ontario. This wine is not an Amarone or a Repasso style wine, just a classic uh, left bank Bordeaux uh, varietal wine. So when I tasted this about two years ago, uh, it, it was really grippy, really structured. I could tell, hey, this is gonna be really something special. This wine here was only sold to restaurants or you could get it at the winery, uh, but only by the case. So it was very small production, uh, really well done wine. This is kind of the second wine. They've, their flagship Bordeaux blend um, is called the uh, Download. So that was a little more expensive. I, um, I think uh, when I looked at the winery, it's about 36 bucks and this one's about uh, 20 bucks. So. That's the magical price everybody wants to pay, right? Uh, $20. Actually, at the LCBO, it's $18.25 for the 2011 vintage of this wine. Uh, so you might want to check that out. 2011, typical vintage, uh, not too hot, not too cold. So that would give you, you know, a good idea um, of, you know, what this wine tastes like. But this one here, 2010, long, hot, dry uh, growing season, almost perfect. Uh, so this one here, really nice uh, tannins in it. And I'm reviewing this now because the 2012s are gonna start to hit the shelves and the 2012s are gonna be phenomenal. Uh, one reason, it was really hot, like 2010, hot, long, dry, probably even hotter and longer and drier growing season. Uh, so produce some really nice ripe fruit there. And I've also been told that Andre Lipinski is using the Apassimento style, so drying a portion of the grape. So uh, the 2012 pipe down, that's probably gonna be a really nice big fat wine. Uh, so for people that like Bordeaux or California uh, style, you know, more Sonoma, Napa wines, you're gonna really, really like the uh, 2010 pipe down if you can find it, which I, I don't think you can, uh, or the 2012. Uh, but you should also go try the 2011 and see what that has to offer. Now, unfortunately, I'm not doing a live tasting of this wine because I still think it needs to age longer. It, like I said, it's very special, very culty, very small production wine. I want to hold on to it a bit longer. Maybe another couple years, it'll be ready to do a live tasting for you guys. Uh, so hang in there, only two more years to go, right? Um, and then I have the LCBO 
pick of the week. Um, now, so this one here really impressed the heck out of me. Uh, it's from the Ribera del Duro. And the Ribera del Duro is southwest of Rioja. Now, if you know, that's Spanish wine, by the way. So if you're not familiar with what I'm saying, Span, Spanish wines from Spain. Uh, if you're not familiar, uh, Rioja is classic Spanish wines. Most people, when they taste Rioja, which is 100% Tempanillo, fall in love with it because it's just, it's got the gracefulness of a, a burgundy, but then, you know, the flavor complexities and tannins of a Bordeaux. Uh, and at a fraction of the price, actually, way, way below the price of either a burgundy or Bordeaux, you can get good uh, Rioja Reserva or Grand Reserva for, you know, $30, $40. And then the Crianzas that come in, uh, you know, the first uh, wine, that's age less is literally around you know fifteen to twenty five dollars. So amazing price points. Like I said, I fell in love with Rioja the first time I tasted it. Uh, loved it. Um, and then uh, when, you know once you love that, you start looking at other places closer to Portugal along the Douro River. Uh, the Ribera del Douro. It's kind of like Rioja, like a napified version. So it's a uh, southern. Uh, located in the south to Rioja, so it, it, it's hotter there, it's more desert-like uh, conditions like in Napa. It's considered a continental and Mediterranean climate because it's got such a har harsh condition, super hot and dry in the summer and then freezing cold in the winter. So uh, really interesting uh, place, Ribeira del Duro. The wines are more modern. Uh, even though they, they follow some of the traditions of Rioja, like they have the Crianza, which this one is, uh, and the Reserva and the Grand Reserva. So the Crianza is, uh, it has to be uh, aged for 12 months in French American oak, um, and then one more year of bottle age, and then they can release it. The Reserva, 12 months in oak, and then uh, two years of bottle age before they can release it. Grand Reserva only produced in the very best vintages when the weather was, you know, perfect. Uh, Age has to be aged for five years and uh, two years in oak. So same rules apply to Ribeira del Duro, um, but I do find that they're more modern style. You get more fruit, you get more wood, you get more flavor, uh, you get more fruit concentration. They're big, round, rich, ripe wines, and, and this one is exactly that. It is so big and round. It, it honestly, it took me about two or three hours of letting it sit open before I started to get this really cool milk chocolate cocoa flavor that was super smooth on the palate. At first it was just rippy tannins, crazy acidity. Um, you, you knew there's lots of uh, you know stuffing in there, but it was hard to get at because this wine, it, it, it's gonna age for uh, a decade easy. It's just a Crianza, but it probably aged 20 years, two decades. Um, so really, really nice put together wine and guess what the price point of this bugger is? $19.99, so wow, uh, there it is right there, Ribeiro da Duro, 100% Tempranillo, and they actually call it in the Ribeira da the Duro, they call it um, Tinto Fino, uh, but it's the same thing, it's just Tempranillo, just their native um, word for it or name for it. So this is a, a Monte Pinadio, so the L's are silent in Spain, and I'm not Spanish, so I'm not pronouncing that at all correctly. Uh, it's called like Monte Pinadio, uh, from the Ribera del Rio, but uh, you know, I'm a gringo, so that's how I say it. Anyway, uh, I got a live tasting of this coming up. I tasted it, like I said, a couple days ago, and I shot myself tasting it, so, um, but it was a pop and pour. So what you're seeing is when I popped and poured it, should have came back like I usually do in classic fashion and, and give you a tasting note uh, an hour or two afterwards because like I said, the milk chocolate really did come out. Really nice put together wine. It's got tons of brown sugar on the nose, which is always a good sign if you like nice rich wines. Color's great, nice and dark. Look how dark that is. I mean, that's fantastic. I've had this wine open for about a half hour, and I think wines like this need about a half hour to an hour to open up, uh, just so you can smell all the nice aromas. And yeah, it's got really nice um, cherry, even like a hint of citrus notes in there with the brown sugar. 
vanilla, oak, smoke, lots of smoke coming in this. Pretty clean though, I don't get any barnyard or pipe tobacco or leafy notes. Mostly uh, vanilla smoke in there, so from the oak probably, the oak treatment. And usually the Spanish like to use 100% American oak, not French oak. So kind of departure from the norm. Everybody else seems to rely on French oak where the Spanish rely on, you know, American oak, which is cool. Actually some kind of funky coconut no uh, notes on the nose as well, so vanilla coconut. And actually you usually get that in, uh, in Rioja, so uh, I guess it would be normal to find it in the Riviera del Duro. Really, really nice nose. Seductive. So let's give it a shot here. Mm. Yeah, big weight. Big, big weight on the palate. Juicy acidity. Wow, just really making my mouth water. And um, really nice structure. Got okay, really grippy tannins. And sometimes you don't get that in the New World in California. You know, you gotta pay. 40, 50, 60 bucks to get those quality tannins with that grip. The other, you know, lore and stuff is like I said in the other video, it's, you know, just goopy and uh, sweet, you know, and it's like they add sugar instead of real wine. This is real wine, right? Uh, real nice structured wine. Like you'd find probably in top shelf Bordeaux at a fraction of the price in Spain. So if you like uh, the Rioja, you've had those wines, try out the Riviera del Duro. Pretty, pretty amazing wines. Cheers.